Welcome to the second part, kind of, of my new um, series, if you will, like uh, where Azure sucks or whatever I will call it in the end, we will see. So it's all about where we currently as a company and me personally experiencing stuff we shouldn't experience with Azure. And today we're talking about Bicep and especially about some claim that I make. It's a little bit bold, but I think it's true. We will see that um, Bicep is... Um, uh, not being idempotent, which is one of the claims they do. I will show, show you what I mean by that and what it means. And I have a demo prepared to prove that, kind of, um, at least in my opinion. So this series, kind of what I what I said last time, I'm trying to link it here at this timestamp. Uh, last time I talked about like the aging of um, uh, API versions of the resource types uh, in Azure, which is, in my opinion, a bad thing because it tells me something about like the speed Microsoft has in terms of um, delivering um, updates to Azure. Uh, and it's kind of shaky, everything, and I don't like it. So I think that I made clear last time and I showed a little bit of PowerShell, maybe a little bit too, uh, PowerShell, maybe a little bit too, too much, we'll see. Today, uh, it's a little bit more crisp. Uh, we will talk about bicep and where it fails. In my opinion, I have one example which constantly na nags on me and I'll try to explain what it is. And hopefully you can follow me on my claim that uh, bicep is probably not idempotent. Uh, so with that, let me hop over to my uh, screen here. Uh, let me do that. Uh, so <laughs> maybe let's start with what I mean with this idempotent. So idempotency. So where I'm here is like the starting point of uh, Bicep in the Microsoft Learn field. And <clears throat> what I'm uh, trying to show you is if you scroll a little bit down, it tells you something like benefits of Bicep. Okay. So we read a lot of stuff, which is uh, important stuff and so on. And then we have this section here. Let me highlight the section. This is this section. And especially here is um, like <clears throat> uh, right in the beginning. It says bicep files are idempotent, which means you can deploy the same file many times and get the same resource types in the same state. So that is the promise, let's say. And it's an important uh, feature of infrastructure as code components like bicep. And by the way, we need to be aware here that bicep only is a transpiler kind of for ARM JSON or for ARM uh, template language, which means I shouldn't should have named the video like ARM is not idempotent, I think, or whatever in Azure is going on. I don't know. Um, but you know, I don't mind because here it is in the bicep documentation and it's not idempotent. In the kind of last series, let me bring up my, uh, my face again to explain it face to face to you guys. So all these videos, the today's uh, recording and the one from uh, from the beginning of this week are preparation videos for an upcoming thing, which may uh, also uh, be ready when you watch this, uh, talking about all the stuff I currently have issues with regarding Azure. So the recording time is 2024. It's now September, end of September 2024. So keep that in mind if you watch that later. It might have changed or got better or whatever. And I will summarize all this stuff later in an upcoming video. Today, I want to concentrate on the bicep issue. So with that, let's go and let me explain what it what it is that I'm so uh, unnerved about or whatever you call it. So what I will do, I've prepared a little uh, empty folder, which is called, and I will, by the way, share my um, sources with you as always, trying to link it then here in the video and everything's good. So what I'm going to do is, let's start pretty simple with a main.bicep file. So I'm trying to explain some stuff in case you are new to Bicep, um, not going all too deep because I have some Bicep videos out there to explain some basics. They're a little bit outdated and to have everything in place in the right way. Let me just simply show you what kind of version I'm running on. The newest currently available version is 0.30.3. This is my Bicep CLI version, which is important when you try to come up with the place, so is that still relevant for me or not? Okay, with that, let's hop over. So what I'm going to do, and I have prepped everything, let me copy in so you don't see me typing that much. So first of all, I tend to do as follows. I have a uh, main bicep, which is kind of my starting point for all the deployment. And I'm saying, well, actually I want to 
scope this file to subscription. So the one thing I can deploy in that file, I really can directly deploy is um, a resource group because that's the kind of thing that you can deploy into a subscription. There's not much more that you can deploy into subscriptions. So that's why we start with that. So this is the resource. This is the canonical name here. I'm having uh, just a variable name, if you will, group. I can select whatever I will. This is the resource type, which I'm trying to deploy. This version is the one, this is a pretty actual version, but you know, there's a more actual available. And actually, let me do that. The latest version, and let, let us see this fail uh, greatly. I think so. Uh, let us see. So as you have seen, this 2024 or 701 version was proposed to me by my IntelliSense on Bicep. So it comes from somewhere, Bicep thinks this thing is a thing. <laughs> okay, let's see. So having those two, um, the string concatenation here with the dollar name and then the location is something you should always do. So I will put that in as parameters, which need to come, which means variables, which need to come from outside um, of this file in a, in a different file. I will show you how we do that, how we provide values to those parameters. No matter, doesn't matter. So now we have a resource group, which is named RG dash, whatever the name is, and it's in the location. Why the location as in parameter? Because if you put in West Europe, you should get a warning, uh, or is it not even getting, I don't know, uh, there was a warning that you're not supposed to have fixed values for locations. Obviously, this is gone. I don't know. I missed something. Okay, cool. So if we have this file, what we need to provide also now the new format is the so-called bicep parent file, which provides parameters for bicep as the name suggests. So let's call that main bicep parent. And then inside of this file in Visual Studio with the right extension detects what this is. And you can type using and then, you know, select the bicep file, which holds or demands the parameters. I do that. As soon as you do that, it gets readily scrolled. So if you hit this mark and say, hey, insert the missing required parameters, he, in other words, he detected what this file has in terms of parameters. And now you can insert the parameters and fill in the values. So this is like now West Europe. So I have, um, that's where I deploy resources like Netherlands, uh, kind of. And um, this now means I want to populate this and say, what is it? Um, I think bicep.demo is a good name for the whole thing. So that means having those variables, it would mean that the resource group deployed would be rg-bicep-demo. Okay, cool. With that, we're almost done, but this is not breaking, right? When you deploy that, it's happily working, probably. It's not, by the way, let me see if I can prove that. Let's open a terminal here. And what we need to do is, there is this new AZ deployment. And as you can see here, it's already pre-populated. The name is, let's say, uh, bicep demo. So this name is the name the deployment gets in Azure because a bicep deployment or an ARM deployment is a resource by itself, which is pretty interesting, not for today, but this is one of my arguments why I don't understand the Terraform for Azure is even a big thing. <laughs> this is very controversial what I say because Terraform is far older and far more stable than Bicep. What I'm claiming here is that is something which is kind of odd. And I will come to that in another session. So whatever. So then because it's a resource you create, the I mean the deployment itself, you need to specify where it should live. So what you can do is the location of the deployment itself is please store all the information about the deployment in West Europe. Cool. So then I need to... Um, create uh, or reference uh, the file where the template is. So my main bicep file, main.bicep. Here we go. And I additionally need to provide oh, tele, uh, so template parameter file. Are you good? This is my main.bicep param. Uh, Okay, 
which usually was a JSON file before. If you are from the old bicep ver versions before 0 0.24 or whatever it was, there was no bicep pair. And what I can do is I can specify, please do a what if deployment. And by the way, in preparation uh, for you, I will pause the video if a long running operation occurs. So don't, you know, um, be irritated if my face is wobbling around and the sound is changing or whatever. Um, so I will pause the video right now after I hit OK. Uh, let's just check that everything works. Oh, uh, by the way, I think I forgot to uh, set my, yeah, my authorization. Uh, we, I have a script for that. Let me quickly execute this. If you have questions for what you see now in the next 10 seconds, um, just, uh, um, just tell me that. Um, I'm just going into a Git folder and this is like the infrastructure root folder and I can do start calf pim group, which is like <coughs> pimming me, privileged identity management using PowerShell. We have this automation if you're interested in that. Uh, so now I'm getting my subscription context, which normally I shouldn't show you this number, but anyways, and this is a script my company wrote for automation for customers and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, just uh, reach out to me. I will try to make a video out of this um, if you're interested. So I did this and let's see if I can now run my, uh, my script here again, the new AZ deployment. Let's see if this figured out that I'm now authorized. If not, I have to lock in myself again. No, it's not. Connect AZ account. Uh, let's go there. Uh, let's see my lock-in happening. I probably should have done this before. Uh, and uh, is something coming up? Yeah, thank you for this window. This is a new experience. And now I got a new token and hopefully I can execute right now. Let's see if this is starting to run. If yes, I will pause the video just for a second and then we will come up with the results. So let's wait a second. Yeah, it's working. I'll be right back. Here we are. Uh, so that's what I wanted to showcase you. One of the annoying things about Vicep, it's happening all over again. And it's not, this is this time probably not the fault of Azure or ARM or something like that. What basically is happening is he tells us here, the API version we selected, 224.0701. Uh, and let me double check this, by the way, Bicep resource group. Let me double check what they tell us here resource group deployment, target scope, whatever. No, that's not what I wanted. I want to see that, um, let me see, this is this string. If you put that into Google, uh, kind of, it shows you the uh, regularly here you have bicep. And then let's see what the version is. It's saying here correctly, use <laughs> 2024.03.01. Don't use 2024.07. For whatever reason, this is not, um, you know, it's just annoying. But this is, I'm just not blaming Bicep for that. That's not what this video is about. But you know, it's, it's kind of unnerving. If you do the what if now, and I will do that happily and pause again. So here we go. He's done. Now we get some valid what if result. I'm not ranting about what if here, which if you're using Bicep is another nuisance here. But anyways, it's working. It's telling us this. I want to create, if you execute this, I want to create a resource at the provided scope at this subscription. There is no resource matching this name. So I will create it. This is the legend. And I have one resource to create, which is in a simple scenario working. Okay, fine. I'm not going to do that. Just wanted to show you this simple fact. So be aware that sometimes the version are broken. Okay, cool. Let's create a new file and let's call that resources.bicep uh, because now I want to deploy some stuff into this resource group, which I cannot specify as if you're cool in bicep, you know that, but just for the beginners, right? Just a real second. You cannot um, deploy uh, what I'm going to do like web server directly into subscription. It needs to be deployed into resource group, which means we need to have a module here in place, which references another file. So that this file now, let me copy this over, can be in the target scope resource group. So whatever we define in that file, needs to be deployed into an existing resource group. Okay, that is what this basically means. So what we will do is wait, uh, we will do this and force 
whoever called us, whoever called this so-called module now, needs to provide location and name, kind of the same as we did with the main bicep, but now the main bicep needs to provide this to this module. Okay, what am I going to deploy? First thing is an app service plan called a server farm. So the first resource type I'm uh, going to create an instance of is a Microsoft Web Server Farm, which means platform as a service web server, something that uh, talks HTTP or HTTPS or whatever. And this is the name I give it like ASP is like app service plan. This is a name that it has in the portal, I think, which is weird again, because server farm is app service plan. What the hell is going on? And now it's my company prefix and then dollar name, like in our case, dash bicep dash demo. Okay, location is cool, an SKU. Let's stick with standard because the free plan usually has limits we don't want to hit. It should be a Windows um, web server, which has some benefits. You know, normally you would tend to deploy a Linux uh, web server, but then turns out that if you want to do special things like debugging, uh, which you need pretty often, to be honest, on a web server, you want to connect to this machine and turns out that the so-called kudo tools and just talking to experts uh, which are facing this are bad on Linux, not implemented correctly, and you can do more on Windows machine. Whatever, no properties whatsoever. It's a just simply speaking, this is a default web server. Okay, that, that's what I want to deploy. Onto that web server, because the web server itself gives you nothing. It's an empty web server providing no web apps. So what I want to deploy is a web app. So called Microsoft Web Sites. So um, what is happening here is, um, by the way, I need to be careful because I forgot to do something. Uh, I will need to add this in a second. Let me switch over and double check that. So here we go. I copied this over. I think this is like telling it on which web server, which I deployed earlier, do you want to provide or do you want to uh, deploy the website itself? So this is a site on that server. I think this is what I need. I'm not sure. We will see. So that is all good. If I deploy this, it will probably work. Okay, so that's not what this talk is about. I'm slowly creeping up. So what I want to do now is I want to re deploy something which is not so common. Let me paste this in. It's a lot of code. Don't get frightened. So what this is, is it is uh, a memory alert here you can see uh, which is kind of getting a name alert blah 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 and then it's deployed into the web server so what this basically says is if something goes wrong with the memory of the machine um, hosting this web server i want an alert to be thrown uh, for the sake of document uh, of, of demo, I left out what you usually have, like what is the alert rule, what should be triggered if the alert is uh, hit it. It's just in criteria. I have an alarm which uh, just says where is my severity level is 2, enabled is true. Where is that? So this is like the evaluation frequency, the window size, and then I have memory pole. This is a dynamic uh, alarm which just looks into uh, depending on the windows defined here he looks if the um, the current uh, whenever he, he runs the check the evaluation uh, he looks back in time like a rolling window which is defined by the window size and he says well is the current memory per uh, percentage kind of you unusual depending on what i saw in the past this is kind of what this is doing and then you can define an alert and basically the same thing, I deploy the exact same thing for the CPU percentage. Like when the CPU percentage goes up unusually or let me um, uh, minimize that because it's not so important. Or the memory goes up in an unusual way. I want an alarm to be thrown. And those things are resources in Azure. You need to deploy them in Bicep, which is a great thing because you define not only the resource app server, but you say, well, on that app server, I want to have an empty site also defined in my Bicep, and I want the alerting defined side by side with my uh, stuff. So that's good. That is my resources I want to deploy. The final thing now is, or the most final thing, I need to go back to my main deployment to, to tell him, to tell it, you need to deploy now a module, which means now I'm not referencing a single resource, but I have this file and I want this uh, as the name for everything which gets deployed in that file. 
This is like resources and group. And that says the scope for this. Remember, it had the star target scope of resource group. So I give it the scope, which is a group I just created. And then the params are, and I need to add location here. And I'm just pushing down the parameters I got into the main bicep down to the module. So now this way, I just use the same parameter all the way. Nice. That's it. Okay. So with that, what we can do, we can test out if this is in principle working. And, you know, now we have this command here and we can see, is that working? Okay, let me pause again. And now it's done. Uh, it took uh, not so much. Five resources to create, which is interesting. Let's see what he's going to create. He didn't do that because it's a what-if deployment. So he says, uh, well, create as a resource group, of course. Then the metric alert. Then the memory alert. Then it has the server farm. And then it detected the website. Um, so what's important about bicep here and to understand what's coming up now is that when we look into the resources, he needs logically here to deploy the app service plan first. Why is that? So this site says my server farm ID is the result, take the result of this deployment and give me the ID of this. Meaning this is like he needs to evaluate this variable. In other, in other words, he needs to execute this deployment, wait for the results in order to retrieve this ID because you only get the ID if this deployment for the app service plan is done. And then in the second step, he can do this here. Okay. There is an explicit way to do that, which is called depends on ASP. Um, uh, of module. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, or is that an array? Yeah. So which instantly gets a warning. So he says, um, this is the old way. And by the way, in ARM, you need to do that to say, well, you can only deploy the site after those things are deployed. And that's why it's an array. It could be multiple things you're waiting for. So it's a warning now because it's unnecessary that's very that will come very important and i hope my demo works out by the way <laughs> but anyway so we need to leave it out and he's happy because he says i know that i you don't need to give me depends on because you already told me the dependency by using a um, property of this deployment so i already know what the order of things is and the same is true here because the scope of the memory alert is again the app service plan ID. So the memory alert also knows that it has to wait for the app service plan before it can de get deployed. And this is very important because inside here of Bicep, no matter in which order you define your things, so I have app service plan, then site, then the memory alerts, in kind of like, I don't care, this is not so important like those two things. Let's put it down there in the file. But Bicep still should detect the dependencies, right? So now we have everything in place. We even executed the what if deployment. So we know that syntactically, kind of, this thing is correct, okay? So what I want to do is I want to remove the what if and see what happens. And now I'm deploying in reality to Azure, right? So let me do that. Again, I will pause. And what I wished for happened. So I got a failed deployment. Okay. So one thing which confuses a lot of beginners in Bicep to point out here, and that's not the scope of this video, but still I want to mention it, is how can it fail after what if deployment told me it looks good? Uh, and that is because other than on Terraform uh, and other tools, the uh, the simulation step beforehand is not telling you the real thing. It only, the what if in Bicep only tells you that it's syntactically kind of correct. And that's not even a guarantee. I can tell you that. So sometimes you have syntactically correct stuff, which will throw syntactic errors or validation errors as soon as Azure gets the stuff. So that's the first point to understand. The second point here is before we try to figure out what's going on. 
So he is giving you this, that's my next critique point, and it doesn't matter if it's on the Mac or on Windows or whatever, this output kind of is so annoying because this is a PowerShell command, right? But what it gives you is basically non-interpretable error stuff. It's just text. So my next critique point about this tooling, also not part of the critique part one of this video is that this error messages are not in any way helpful for unattended installations like in Azure pipelines or whatever. Okay. So what is going on? He claims bad request on memory percentage and CPU percentage. Before we dig into that, let's hop over to my Azure portal and see what happened in the Azure portal. Okay. So hopefully this thing is not lying to me, lying to me, and he shows me um, bicep demo. And what we see, he happily deployed two resources, right? Cool. So now let me do the following thing. I'm not touching my bicep files. Let me actually close this so they don't suspect me to do anything with it. And you can take my source code here, which I will share with you, and you can try it out for yourself and tell me if you want that it works for you, then something is wrong with my subscriptions or whatever. I don't think so, but let's see. With that, I simply repeat this command. I execute it a second time, okay? Let's do that. Let's pause again. And without me changing anything on my bicep file, it now worked. Let's hop over to the Azure portal. Let's refresh this. Azure portal is happily lying to us. That's why I tell my customers don't use this mess because it's caching a lot. And if I do control F5, let's see if it's working. And if it's now, no, it's not. And this is a lie. Okay. It's there. Trust me, if I would use like PowerShell, now it's here and it's showing me the alerts. So I will go into what this reason for that is in a second. But for the, for the sake of this video, let's hop over to a sentence that we read here. And let me zoom this for you. Repeatedly deploy your infrastructure throughout the development lifecycle and have confidence in your resources are deployed in a consistent manner. Bicep files are idempotent, which means you can deploy the same file many times and get the same resource types in the same state. And that is not true. If you ask me, you can have a different opinion. I totally accept that. What I read here is that what I showed you right now and what you can reproduce by yourself is not what's happening. And that is only one example. So, okay, that was the main purpose of this video. Now let's go into what do I think is this coming for and other weird behavior. Let's do the following. Let's do remove resource group, RG bicep demo, force. Let me pause the video for a second, enable to give it time to remove the resource group. Okay, the complete thing. See you in a second. Done. So let me quickly execute my deployment again while I talk to you while, what I'm trying to achieve. It could be, let's see what happens, that this time the deployment went through smoothly. So to be clear, I deleted the resource group. I did it in PowerShell, ensuring that it's really deleted, not depending on the Azure portal telling me it's gone. Because sometimes the Azure portal tells me that and um, PowerShell will tell you, no, it's not, it's, it's still there. So just as Azure portal, okay. It has reasons why it does it because the user experience would be pretty poor in the Azure portal if it would wait for everything. But this is another talk. Don't use the Azure portal for professional um, handling of Azure. That is, uh, I cannot overstate it. But anyways, now I'm deploying with the same settings, meaning the same parameters. I didn't touch the file. And what I saw and what I, what we maybe will see that it runs through deploying everything correctly. That is interesting. And I'll tell you what I think what happens. As you can see, I'm right. So it succeeded. No error here on the first deployment, right? If we hop over to the Azure portal and see it lie to us, probably let's go to the resource group and let's see on this subscription, uh, which I showed you, this is a test subscription. And let's see the resource group on that subscription. 
and let's see what's going on. Bicep demo is here. It's not like, and it's everything is there. Okay. Right. So let's do a trick. And you probably saw that coming. Let's change the name to Bicep demo 2. And now let's execute this command again. So in other words, uh, let's create a second resource group. Bicep demo 2 with another app service plan, which has a new name and execute it again. So what now probably will happen is, or what I expect to happen, I want to see the same failure again. And I think I can explain why if it happens. Let me tell you that you will experience this failure. So what will happen probably is that, and that's what I said, let me quickly re-execute this command at this run after I deleted the resource group. Because what happens is that Azure isn't really deleting the resources for a while, okay? So what happens is those resources in, I think what happens, I don't know, are flagged as deleted, not shown in the portal, but still there. So in case you kind of undelete them by redeploying the same resources, Azure is not really doing it. And no, um, this is not happening. Let me try another thing, which is probably now I have two resources. Let me see, because I've, mm, uh, it worked. So I didn't expect it to work. Let me remove those resources real quick. Bicep demo force and bicep demo two. I will remove them. So again, this happened to me all over again. When I changed uh, just the name of the resource group, then suddenly the error reappeared. So and when I left the same resource group right after I deleted the resource, it just went through smoothly, which makes things even worse. Because now what I can, what can I rely on in terms of automation? What Microsoft constantly tells us is you should not deploy those stuff, bicep stuff in a manual manner. What you should do is go to your CI CD pipeline and ensure that your Azure infrastructure matches whatever your source code expects there to be and run the deployment all over again because it is an incremental deployment. It will not delete anything. You can rely on me. I will not delete that. Uh, I will just add resources or change resources uh, in state, which are not matching whatever you have. So, and relying on that is pretty crucial if you want to uh, be consistent uh, in uh, applying your, um, in applying your infrastructure as code. You know, that's very important. Um, I cannot rely on that, uh, obviously. Let me remove that because depending on where, where, whatever I do, wait a second, he, he didn't accept it because I didn't save that. Oh, so let me re-execute it again. Uh, bicep demo two, and let me do the bicep demo two deployment again. So now we will fail again, probably, because now we ensure, uh, I just didn't save the file, my mistake. Now we ensure that he cannot reuse bicep demo as a resource name, he needs to create new resources depending on some caching timeout. I don't know how big it is and if it's constant. I don't know. I don't care. I expect this thing to be idempotent uh, and have reliable results like it's promised on the web page. And this is a dangerous situation. So let's see what happens here. I uh, will, um, I think I need to pause again and then we'll see it failing again. Okay, just a second. And no, it's not. It's, it's not failing. I promise you, you can try it out for yourself. If you try to reproduce this, it will fail. Sorry about that. It will fail at some point in time. So I try to remove this resource group and then I will try to talk with you. Sorry that the last demo didn't work out. Probably I messed up some timing or whatever. But let's talk about what I think where this comes from. So what I think what happens and what the solution would be is I think the dependency tree here is it follows. This is the root thing and the dependencies are kind of this way. Let me write this down. So all of those three are kind of, I hope this is not too messy, are depending on this thing. So in order to get a better order here, what I could do is I could tell the site manually, I want you to wait until my other two resources, memory alert and CPU alert, are deployed. So now he's not complaining because he says, okay, that's, that's legit. 
because what you want me to do and you don't reference it already you want me to wait explicitly for those two deployments before deploying the website so what i will do now is so what i did to have the same drawing this is still the root but then the two dependent things are now those two guys they still have a direct dependency but this guy now waits for those two he waits until those two are finished so the order of things is one two two i don't know which one when and three so this is the order now and that's i think this works and i will try to uh, run this you can try it out for yourself you can run it like bicep demo uh what does it mean bicep demo bicep works now let's see i never use this name uh, I, I save it and to, to have a good experience for you guys what i will do now is param uh, deploy in um, no explicit order let's do that explicit order bool is false and what i will say is var site dependencies equals if explicit order is set to true it is just null and otherwise it is and i don't know if i can do that even i never did it just a demo this one okay nice and then i say site dependencies so what i can do now is no i can't uh module module uh yeah you cannot build this because i compile nah, it's not it's not possible maybe i can do it here mm, can i do it here no i cannot do that so you have to do it manually uh trust me okay you have to put this in or leave it out i cannot make it parameterized maybe i could but i don't find a way so this line 23 here and I will probably add a readme to that. So if you remove this, the error occurs. And if I'm right, and I'll execute this, if you don't remove it, if you leave it as it is, it should always work. If my suggestion is right, and this is a hot test, I didn't check that before, uh, because this is what my whole video is about. I will re-execute this with a complete new name and come back with the result. Let's see if it goes through, okay? Surprise for me, and maybe for you, no, it has the same error saying bad request, uh, this time only on memory percentage, by the way, not on CPU. Let me redeploy it. Let me just, without changes, execute it again and hit pause again. And long and behold, it succeeded, which is even worse than I thought. I thought I found a loophole, but I didn't. So sorry for distracting you, but uh, it's a good thing that you saw that. That was my train of thought, which, were le which was leading nowhere. Uh, so even then, when I explicitly say, hey, wait with the site deployment until the CPU and memory alert are deployed, even then it's not listening to me and obviously coming into weird state. So kind of like, you know, he, he's not, he's in a locked state and saying, hey, you want me a memory alert, but this is not happening. And it makes not even sense. The, the error message doesn't mean, uh, even make sense here couldn't find a metric named memory percentage, which probably means that as soon as he tries to deploy this memory alert, he says here somewhere that the metric name he needs to be on is memory percentage. This is what he complains about. So problem is something in Azure is looking into the scope, which is this app service plan, looking here and saying, do you have a metric with this name? And this thing is not yet ready it's not fully deployed and saying no i don't have it and that's why this error message appears which is a lie because some seconds later or whatever time i don't know suddenly this thing says yeah by the way i have this metric and this happens not only when you talk about those resources i'm showing i can show you here that this is like from the issue tracker of azure bicep right in, on github and here's somebody like R. Charity, uh, no, R. Sherry, I, I don't know, I probably mispronounce his name like every YouTuber does. But anyway, he is having uh, blob container issues, obviously. So he's proposing, to, and this is, this is already telling you so much, he's proposing wait and retry deployment options, kind of saying implicitly, hey guys, okay, I got it. Your depends on is not working. 
So what about we build in a way to kind of build a sleep into the thing to force it like we did it in Visual Basic in 2001 or something <laughs> when we got issues to force it to wait because he obviously this poor guy or obviously accepted there's no way around this problem other than waiting for some period of time so at least the scripts are doing item potency in some way which is a poor thing and then there's this discussion going on which I happily uh, joined somewhere here my face will appear with my company account so that you know whatever blah 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 and I don't think any solution here I read this at some point and I don't know uh, let me zoom and uh, where's my face uh, here it is here is yes me and long behold just to be clear here isn't that contradicting the statement from the documentation and I have repeatable result so guess what um, if you do me a favor just hit a like here if you agree with me because for some reason I got ignored totally and what I wanted to say here, hey guys are we really talking about the right thing discussing those options or whatever or might it be that we are ignoring the elephant in the room that this is not needed to put wait and retry if the item potency works correctly and at least the dependency resolution tree shaking whatever is going on there works correctly. And probably this is not even a bicep issue, guys. As I said, so it's I found something in bicep, but this is a transpiler for ARM, which generates ARM templates, sending them to Azure, and then something fails there, and poor bicep is now the culprit I'm dragging out of the seller, blaming it for doing this here. Deployment failed. But in fact, what we need to be aware, if you look into the resource group we just did, uh, where is that? Uh, it should be a new one. Bicep works now. This is a resource group which I now got deployed second time. And from now on, I can run the deployment as many times as I want. From now on, it's kind of item potent. It's not, but this is another issue. And here now we have the deployments, right? And I don't even see the old deployment because I said, okay, uh, I don't want to have it. But the point here is that this tells you, well, actually what happened is that ARM got deployed. Right? I, Bicep just transpiled this to ARM template, which is a poor language, and I can show you what this looks like. If you are interested in what you need to do in your project, where's my VS Code? And let's see, Bicep built the main Bicep, and let's happily watch the main JSON, which is here. So that clumsy code is what we wrote some time ago, and that is a culprit. Something here goes horribly wrong, probably. So that is what I wanted to share. So with that, I will, as I said, add a readme. Let me bring my face up. So I will add a readme. This is, I'm very glad that this demo went well, uh, to be honest, because I wasn't sure if this is reproducible and I was, this haunts me like for one year at least because we have it in our modules and I say, I, at some day I have to put this out to the public, whatever. Uh, put something in the comments. As I said, this also is a prep video like the previous one which I will link here, for an upcoming video, uh, which will summarize all of that, what I think stinks kind of about the current situation in Azure. Okay, so that is why I do that, to just get rid of my frustration from the inside a little bit, because I don't see it heading anywhere in Bicep, um, because they're not the corporates. I don't see Microsoft being very active about that, uh, which is another problem, but anyways, and uh, I'm finally a little bit sick of that and just speaking out. That's what I'm doing. Um, and tell me what you think about that. And hopefully this helps somebody. Uh, have a nice one and see you next time.